said, I, just, I met John when we did the audition, and he walked in, and as I said, I was kind of stunned. I mean, uh, he came in, went, did his numbers, said, okay, fly an hour, and he's off. But I figured that he was really, really good for tomorrow, and I wanted him in the show, and he was a sensation in the show. He really was terrific. Although I have to admit that trying to direct him in a show <laughs> was, was, was not easy. But he did show me something. He taught me how to hyperventilate. <laughs> And every time we got together, the bat came out because he was just, he was something very special. You know, how can you not love that in his face, you know? John could read a phone book and make you laugh. And when we were doing the revival of senior class in 2003, John and Julie invited me to stay with them and they were both very gracious hosts. Even Holly made me feel welcome. And, I'm sorry, I lost my point. Even how it made me feel up, okay. And while they felt, after a while, I came to get the feeling that I was a man who came to dinner because I was there forever with them. And it was, and love, one thing we talked about the big band days, John, I just love staying up late with John and he'd just sit and I'd ask him questions about the big bands and he was a fountain of information and, and it was such a treat just being there for me. I loved every minute of it. John had a great partner in life and Julie was the glue that kept all of this together. We all know that John was high maintenance, very high maintenance, 24 hours a day. But she didn't mind, she took good care of her John. I could describe Julie in two words, Mother Teresa. <laughs> you know, I have a feeling that John is up in heaven making God laugh and maybe causing him to hyperventilate a little bit. I, will, I love John, I will miss him very, very much, but I will treasure all the memories that we shared together. Rest in peace, John. And all the way from Fonskin, we have the star of film and stage, Shirley Jones, and the king of humor, Marty Hengels. Please. He didn't do it. 
I was devastated. Bye bye, Joan Grandy. My wife saw him from time to time. She loves unconditionally. I don't. And I didn't. And it went on that way. About three weeks ago, three weeks ago, the phone rang. It was John. This is John Grandy, he said. I said, okay, so what? He said, look, listen, I'm not sure what came down or why we stopped communicating, but that doesn't work for me anymore. I want you back in my life. The next time you come up here, you and I, nobody else, I was a Mr. Jones that night. <laughs> People call me Mr. Jones, I always say, look, if they think I'm Tom Jones, that's all. <laughs> then, then, the next time you come up to Big Bear, he said, I want you, nobody else, and me to go and have lunch somewhere. You know, I'm in my late 70s, and I've met everybody. You know how rare that simple phone call was? How impossible. It never happens. When was the last time you had a call from anyone that you were in combat with who said, screw war, I love you? Whoa. That call blew me away. Love thy neighbor, it'll confuse the hell out of him. <laughs> and we almost got to that meeting. God had dibs on John Grandy, but not before John got on the telephone and got to talk to me and balance the books. If we all could do just that, and it didn't embarrass me, that I didn't do it, and I didn't have the stuff, which I didn't. I was making points. John was making love. So long, John Grandy. Like Jesus, you taught us something. Won't be long, I'm going to lay up to see you. <laughs> and I'm still pissed off at you. <laughs> except you. <laughs> Go to your seat. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Marty. <laughs> i got a few tears rolling down my face today. You know, I, I, uh, I've been trying to think what I wanted to, the words I wanted to say today. Uh, the right words to say goodbye and we love you and I love you, John. And I couldn't think of them and all of a sudden the words came to me. There were bells on the hill but I never heard them ringing. No, I never heard Till there was you There were birds in the trees But I never heard them singing No, I never heard them at all Till there was you And there were And there were Words I forget and there were wonderful roses. They tell me in sweet, fragrant meadows 
of John and you. There was love all around, but I never heard it sing. No, I never heard it at all till there was you. And there was music, and there were wonderful roses. They tell me in sweet, fragrant meadows of dawn and you. There was love all around, but I never heard it sing. No, I never heard it at all Till there was you because of the sobs, so forgive me. I love John. We, he taught me an awful lot. You know, I first came up here and um, I had my house and I met, John was one of the first people that I met up here. And he, I knew he was connected with the theater and uh, we had long talks about his career, my career. I had a lot of his spaghetti in his house. And uh, we had such a good time together. And he loved the theater, and he loved music. He loved his column, which I, you know, I get the Grizzly I, at home. I read it all the time. It was my favorite, favorite column. And uh, both, both Marty and I really enjoyed him every moment, as we do and still do Julie. Thank you, Julie, for everything. You're a great lady, and you had a great guy, and you still do. Thank you.